Now, down there in the Mississippi, where all the sewage and all the, the uh, fertilizer drains from between the Rockies to the Appalachians, down the Mississippi, into the Gulf of Mexico, we've got over 20,000 square kilometers of ocean, of, of Gulf, that are considered the dead zone every year, where that fertilizer causes microscopic algae to bloom and then die and rot. And when it does so, it uses up all the oxygen. So in that whole area, there's nothing alive for most of the year. If we went ahead and established uh, algae farms there in the ocean, we could actually oxygenate the water because Calper plants, they would breathe in the carbon dioxide in the water, breathe out oxygen, saving all that sea life in the, sh in the shrimp industry, and we could supply most of the country with uh, alcohol right there from the Gulf. The kelp solution left over, well, now that we don't need the oil pipelines from those oil platforms out in the Gulf, could be used to move the kelp solution to the Midwest, and that would replace almost all of our fertilizer, which comes from natural gas. So, you know, when you start, you know, getting serious about, okay, how do we produce alcohol in a way that is um, environmentally sound? We have many choices, and these are just two of the ones that I talk about in the book. Both are practical. Both are cost-effective today. Um, both are being done for other purposes, like cattails on sewage treatment plants and Chinese kelp farms. So it's we don't need a new technological breakthrough. We just need to apply what we already know. Oh, there's 20 different small businesses in, in alternative energy that are contained in the book easily. Everything from starting a neighborhood alcohol fuel station, which we're mm -hmm. just about to do in Santa Cruz in the next uh, month, um, to collecting donuts from your local, uh, you know, your local bakeries, you know, because cops can only eat so many donuts and then they throw <laughs> the rest away. And you can make uh, from one donut place, you can make a couple of hundred gallons a day of alcohol wow. just from the waste donuts. You from know? the sugar? Well, you know, sugars in donuts, but of course, donuts are white flour and uh, flour and starch are really nothing but sugar linked together. So when we make alcohol, we dissolve the starch to sugar. We feed the sugar to yeast, which then eat it and basically poop out the alcohol. So, you know what? I explain this in Napa. The wine guys really don't like me to I, put I, it that way. I, I, I was uh, waiting for months to hear the phrase poop out the alcohol on the <laughs> show. And uh, today's the day. And you got it. And then we go ahead and distill it, which is really moonshining. And, uh, you know, so we have donut whiskey that we put in our cars. And we can make that for about 30 cents a gallon, you know. So uh, that's pretty good. Well, alcohol was the original auto fuel, and it's still the best. And to convert our cars back to running on alcohol uh, usually costs less than $300. Or you can buy a flexible fuel vehicle right from the factory that has just a little smarter computer that can adjust between alcohol and gas, and you do nothing whatsoever. You put whatever you want in the tank. Now, uh, getting the alcohol is the trick, basically. You can either make it yourself, but now here in Portland, there are a couple of places you can buy alcohol at the pump. Uh, it goes by the name of E85 or 85% alcohol. Uh, we're going to see more stations like this going in, but one of the things we promote in our workshops and in the book are drive-around stations where people can get together and find a parking lot in their neighborhood and rent a little space in that parking lot to set up an above-ground alcohol fuel station that they own. And there's a good reason to own the station, and this is what we're setting up in Santa, Santa Cruz is a drive-around station. Because right now, the oil companies get $0.61 cents a gallon tax credit on every gallon of alcohol they blend with gasoline. You know, that's a good thing because we're replacing oil. But we don't really want the oil companies to get that tax credit. But if we're owners of the station, we can pass the tax credit through to the drivers. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back live. And uh, for most of the uh, next uh, hour ahead of us, we have a guest on uh, who is with the American Farm Bureau Federation Senior Director, Congressional Relations, Rick Krause. And I saw... Articles years ago in England, Australia, New Zealand, some places passed laws to tax the flatulence of cows, pigs, chickens, geese, goats, sheep, uh, everything. And, and see, that's what greenhouse taxes do. When you read the U.N. documents, Club of Rome documents and others, they openly admit. And we've made films about this and covered it. It's in Endgame. Blueprint for Global Enslavement, that it's about controlling human activity and regulating it. And this will fund the new utopic socialist state. 
So it isn't really about global warming, which now it's getting cold, so they say it's climate change. Uh, it's normal to have climate change. They're, in their internal documents, which are public but not highly publicized, i.e. they're not secret, but you've got to know where to look, it's all about control. And, uh, you know, Barack Obama says his job is to bankrupt the coal industry. Uh, they say they're going to regulate and tax everybody, premise society, animal ID. American Farm Bureau is, represents the interests of, of farmers, farmers and ranchers across the country. We um, are comprised with 51 state farm bureaus, the 50 states plus Puerto Rico, and uh, we basically work in state capitals to lobby. We, we work in Washington, D.C. to lobby for our Congress and the agencies. And we also provide services to farmers and ranchers across the country. Basically, we're, we're organized to help farmers and ranchers and to promote their interests and to look after their interests. Now, you're quoted uh, in this uh, particular uh, news story that I'm uh, reading out of the uh, Wyoming Farm Bureau Federation, uh, is saying this is no laughing matter, Kraus said. The cow tax and the pig tax are parts of a larger scheme by the Environmental Protection Agency to regulate greenhouse gases under the Clean Air Act. They want 175 per dairy cow, eight, uh, $87 per head of beef cattle, and uh, $21 or so for every pig to start with. Uh, let's break this down, what this would do to the already struggling family farm and ranch that are almost a uh, eradicated uh, commodity. I don't know of any farm or ranch that can pay that kind of money per head and survive. Real man of genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Silent Killer Gas Passer. Mr. Silent Killer Gas Passer. Last night, you had the enchilada combo platter. This morning, the three cheese omelet with broccoli. This afternoon, you're a ticking time bomb. Because of you, a simple elevator ride is suddenly a 42-floor plummet into the very bowels of hell. You take my breath away. Who did it? Who cares? Sweet mercy, please just someone light a match. Sweet, sweet mercy. Mr. Silent It's, uh, yeah, and, and the thing is that what they're going to be collecting for here uh, under this tax doesn't go to help solve anything. It goes back into the program to uh, administer the cost of the program, which, as you mentioned, the enforcement mechanisms, uh, the the application fees, whatever. So the more money they get, the more money they're going to have to uh, to go out and enforce this stuff. Senior advisors to President Obama have said publicly that they intend to go through with this regulatory scheme once they get into office. Government is tightening the noose around farmers and ranchers, making it very difficult for them to continue to operate. And once that happens, uh, they're going to stop, and food's going to go overseas, and we're going to be importing food at much higher prices. And, by the way, the Argentine and Brazilian and, uh, you know, all that South American uh, beef coming in, the Chilean, it doesn't have. They don't have to uh, do all of this. So again, no, they don't. And that's that's one of the issues that that uh, all these regulations are coming on us at added cost to to production, and these to come in without those at much lower prices, and we're going to pay for it. But again, big business likes that. They like big trains or big ships coming in with beef. Uh, where they can use the hormones, uh, use the uh, antibiotics, the growth hormones, bring it in, feed us the crud, bankrupt the farmers and ranchers, big agri comes in and buys it up. And then meanwhile, they'll be flatulating down in Brazil. They'll be flatulating uh, in other uh, countries. It'll only be here that we won't have the jobs. Exactly. Now, that's exactly the, that's exactly the trend. Regulated into uh, non-existence. Well, they, I mean, they just caught NASA, mainstream news, falsifying all the global warming numbers. Folks, uh, uh, they're going to hurt us. But meanwhile, the cheeseburger-eating zombies have no idea what's going on. Oh, my God.